Embracing my sexuality took a while. I don't know what my story would be like if I experienced some haterism at my church. My name is Janaya June, and I am a singer, songwriter, worship leader. Where's your toes? Mom and wife. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana. For most of my life, I knew that I had an attraction to both sex, but growing up in the South, a black Christian household, it's kind of taboo. The Bible says, being gay is a sin, you're going to hell, you're gonna be condemned for it no matter what, so we're not even gonna talk about it. But relocating to Washington kind of opened my eyes to a large group of diverse uh, cultures, ethnicities, and ultimately sexualities. This is just who I am, but how do I still live in my truth? When I came out, as a bisexual woman, I'm assuming all church people saw it. I expected a little bit of pushback. Rejection from, from the community is one challenge that black LGBTQ individuals face within uh, church communities. Because historically, black church is not just a space where worship happens, it is also a space where I, the black identity can be affirmed. And black church served as a social and community center for black people major vehicles for political activity. So black LGBTQ plus individuals more likely to be raised Christian than their white counterparts. And so there is a certain members of the LGBTQ plus population who are actually staying despite encountering uh, minority stressors. My name is Leslie David Braxton. I am senior pastor. Not confuse reconciliation. Of the New Beginnings Christian Fellowship. I actually met Janae when she was in middle school. Janae grew up in this church. Her and Josie's wedding was the first same-sex marriage that I attended. The deacons were saying to me, what are you going to do, Pastor, if someone asks you to do a, to officiate over same-sex marriage? So long as you both shall live. I will. And I said, if they're a member, I'm going to do the same thing I would do for any other couple. That all people should be treated equally, regardless of who they are or who they love. When Barack Obama came out and when he finally gave his speech on same-sex marriage. By offering to all loving same-sex couples the dignity of marriage across this great land. That following Sunday, I did a sermon on, the first one was why I embrace same-sex marriage. It's also Pride Month. And let's make no mistake about it, New Beginnings Christian Fellowship, we are a welcoming and affirming church. I've dealt with backlash and pushback. There's some churches that I don't get invitations to speak at locally and nationally. Three or four hundred people who used to be member of New Beginnings who have left over that issue alone. How you doing? Yeah, how are you? I ain't talked to you in a minute. I know. I'm not going to alter my stand to hold on to this position. I love you too. How do I provide support and guidance for LGBTQ couples? within the church. I encourage them, come out of the closet. There are enough people out here in this world now who are gonna love you and support you for who you are. My church members show acceptance. They hug my wife, they hug my daughter. They say, hi Josie, hi Shiloh. We love you guys, you guys look so beautiful. There's been an increase in acceptance of the LGBTQ plus population. There were certain leaders who were outwardly affirming, saying we need to be more supportive. My role is to, upon every opportunity that I have, to continue to be what Martin King called a drum major for consciousness, for, for justice, for inclusion, for continuing to teach people about us being one common humanity. Oh, look at that pretty hair. Once we got married and we had my daughter, Shiloh, it's just, they, they love her so much. 
<laughs> she said, I'm tired, let's go. <laughs> Nothing has changed except for me openly expressing who I am. Now I'm free to worship in the congregation with my wife and my daughter. <laughs> It's like I can embrace who I am in all areas of my life. One, two, three.